Imagine a giant star, a space object with ginormous mass, collapsing down into gravitational singularity. This is a region of space where the density of matter becomes infinite. In such areas, the standard concepts of space and time don't have any meaning anymore. No wonder such objects have captured our imagination. These days, we even have a few photos of black holes, or rather, the space around them. The first photo of a black hole's event horizon was taken in 2019. The event horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape. We can use the event horizon to estimate the size of the black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. An international team of scientists that consisted of more than 200 astronomers had been working for years to get this result, and eventually their efforts paid off. The black hole, the region around which they managed to capture, is about 55 light years away from Earth at the center of the galaxy M87. People saw this amazing image thanks to the work of a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight radio telescopes. But it was tricky. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. But even though now we kind of know what a black hole looks like from the outside, we haven't figured out what might be waiting for us on the other side. Many people imagine black holes as bizarre portals to other worlds, dimensions, or parallel universes. We'll get back to these theories a bit later. So, why not jump into a black hole and go all the way to the other side? Unfortunately, such an escapade is bound to end tragically. If something gets close to a black hole, there's no escape. You might argue that you don't need to go back. After all, you want to explore what's ahead. True, but there's another problem. The force of gravity around a black hole increases dramatically the closer you come. It even creates the effect of spaghettification, when an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the effects of gravity. When spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. And eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole quite far away from the point of no return. And that's not how you want your space adventure to end. Well, I don't. Getting something to cross the event horizon isn't as easy as it may seem. The material needs to be pushed out of its stable orbit around the black hole. In other words, something must make it fall in, just like it happens with the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled towards it, right? One of the few reasons why the material might cross the event horizon is collisions between particles. By crashing into one another, they gain some energy, and that's enough to send them spiraling into a black hole. An object entering a black hole is instantly transformed. From the outside, it would seem as if the object starts moving more slowly, because time distorts near the event horizon of a black hole. From the perspective of the object falling into this space monster, it would take an infinite amount of time for it to become a part of the black hole. When it happens, its mass will be added to that of the black hole. But even if you somehow manage to survive entering a black hole, you wouldn't be able to come out on the other side. Now, I might disappoint you right now, but black holes don't go anywhere. There aren't any holes involved. And these space phenomena aren't even black. Or at least that sort of black. Black holes might seem inky because even light can't escape their clutches, but this has nothing to do with their color. Anyway, when you cross a black hole's event horizon, all paths lead to the singularity, even if we talk about a photon of light moving directly away from it. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. That's why some scientists suggest that when all this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, 
its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. And such a black hole is like a rubber band, stretching along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. Wow, that sounds insane. Then, there's also a theory about parallel universes, and this multiverse theory takes it all one step further. Those who believe in it state that there might be countless realities. According to this theory, we live in a bubble that is just one of many other bubbles. And these bubbles constantly pop up and vanish. And guess what? Right, black holes might be tunnels between these universes. Or rather, not tunnels, but wormholes. This idea that black holes could be wormholes leading to other galaxies or universes has been around for some time. It gained some fresh ground in the 1980s when a discussion started about whether an object could physically travel through such a tunnel. But since there's no firm evidence that a black hole can allow for such a passage, this remains just an idea. But if black holes lead to other galaxies or other universes, there must be something opposite to them on the other side. That's where the concept of white holes comes into play. So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse, or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. But how might white holes form? One of the theories speculates that a white hole might be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. What if, inside a black hole, there's a long tube that keeps getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back? And then, the super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. But then, what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? According to quantum mechanics, Many things we perceive as continuous are granular. Even light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back giving birth to a white hole. What matter would such a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It would be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. And while black holes have an event horizon, white holes would have a reversed event horizon. It would prevent anything from entering a white hole. And because of this feature of white holes, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to even get close to it. <laughs>